Thank you. You may take a seat. Who loves being in church? I love it. I love it. Um, can we say a thanks to the team for... I had to go get tissues because I was crying in that worship. That was really good. Not that crying is the only way to measure if it's good, but it is a pretty good indicator if it's good. Obviously, yes, we do give honour to God because God was the one who moved me, but you guys are still pretty incredible. Before I begin, um, I just, I feel particularly, oh boy, I feel particularly humbled today. And I feel like I should start off just by saying that um, um, I guess I realized today that anything that we say from the platform, anything that we preach and bring, these are, you know, my words that I'm going to be speaking tonight, I suppose. Um, I'm really not interested in you remembering anything about me. I'm more interested that you walk away with a bit of life change. I'm more interested that you grab onto something that's in the Word of God. And I know that sometimes me- humans' words can fall flat to the ground. And that's why I'm really trusting that tonight you pick up something straight from heaven. And so, please, through everything, just let's be looking for God. And, um, and, I- and I'm always really excited whenever the Word of God is preached because I just know that it has the capacity to do things in my life that I just couldn't get anywhere else. And so I'm believing that we're going to get that tonight. You keen? And in that state, I, I feel like I sh- just want to pray before we begin. I don't normally do this, but I just feel it's appropriate for tonight. God, I just thank you that um, a- as we enter into this time where we hear your word, that you, you can do something amazing through it, that as it reaches into our lives and it analyzes every part of our being, that um, we, we can find it applicable for every area of life and every struggle that we face, every person that we think about, every... Um, every situation that we have to walk into this week, we can, we can find a place where your word applies. And so I pray that tonight, especially for um, this such a varied experience across the room, such different stories that we're all going to walk into tomorrow and even tonight, that you would help us to um, just receive from you and, and, and walk forward into this week knowing that you love us and knowing that you have something for our life. Amen. So as you can see, my message tonight is called, Give Me Space. Who's ever said that before? Bro, just, just give me some space, bro. You ever heard, ever heard that before? Someone with copy breath, it's like, just give me space, please. And there was an experience that I had which enraged me last year. We were on the way to Sydney, Hannah and I, and we decided to drive. And um, Hannah's got a great car, but it is known for its economy and not its ability to accelerate <laughs> and um, we had all these cars behind us as we went up this hill and we finally got to this double lane and all these people just overtook us and um, and then the, the, the overtaking lane was coming to an end and Hannah is she's like she's like really proper really prompt and she's not a crazy driver so you know instead of waiting until the very last second to merge across, she merged at the appropriate time. Well, the final driver didn't appreciate this and proceeded to tailgate us for about a kilometre and it got so bad that it was to the point where I turned around to look out the back window and they were so close that all I could see was bull bar. I couldn't actually see into their windscreen to see, like, who it was. Like, that's how close it was. And um, Hannah was like, like, I'm freaking out. What are we going to do about this person who was obviously angry and now swerving left to right and, you know, obviously trying to prompt us and give us some attention. Um, and then we finally got to this place where it was safe for them to overtake and they swung out and they drove past and, um, and I was so, I was just like so mad. Like, you know, you know how in those situations you just get so enraged in yourself and, um, and I was just like, just, can you, can you give us some space? Like, you might not be ov- able to overtake, but there's no need to tailgate. Like, you'll get an overtaking lane later. And I'm really sorry that our engine capacity feels like it's 0.5 litres. 
but like this is we're doing the best we can like honestly our foot is to the floor just give me some space who's ever felt like that before and it's because you know when the danger is close we feel uncomfortable and we're like I I need space like I need to distance myself from this danger we felt that before right like if you ever walk into a room in your house and there's a spider there you don't want to go up and sit next to it and start you know, scrolling Instagram and get really close. Like, the proper procedure, if there's a spider in your house, is to back away, close the door, lock it, walk out of the house, and then set it on fire. Like, you need to get as much distance as you can between you and that spider. All the ladies, you feel me? All the men, you just probably want to look real brute, so, you know, we go in and whack it. You're on the fire train, yeah. And it's like, like I want to be as far away from the danger as I can. Like, give me some space from that danger, man. If someone is sick and they're like, come into your work and they're like coughing, you're immediately like, I don't want to be the person that talks to them. Or someone else go talk to them. Like, give me space. Go home. Call us on the phone and like, we'll deal with this. But please, stay away. And um, so I guess you could say the, the alternate title for my message is about how to escape the danger zone. But I feel like in life, maybe we don't even realize that we are so close to danger. And we need to be able to, like, we, we do this with things that are small and big, but we want to give ourselves space from the danger. But sometimes we don't even realize how close to the danger we are. Sometimes we are so, so close to the, the danger. Now, Naturally, like I said, we want to distance ourselves from danger. So maybe you find yourself in one of these categories. Maybe you've, you know, you've moved away from your house to get away from your parents because it's just a conflict zone and you just feel hurt all the time. Maybe you changed classes in school because someone was bullying you. Maybe you avoided hangouts because of a certain person that was there. And like all of these situations are like, man, I'm distancing myself from that danger. Maybe you never post photos of yourself on the internet because you have such a fear of getting negative comments or what people are going to say from you. So you distance yourself from that. Maybe you never tried out for a team, applied for a job because you have a fear that you're never going to measure up and you're not going to get there. Maybe you've barely talked to girls because you're so afraid of rejection. It's like a tendency within us that, um, that we just want to distance ourselves from the danger. But then at the same time, it's like we're walking on the edge of the cliff face. Like the danger is right there. Like I don't know if you've ever walked along a cliff face. It's like I want to distance myself from that edge. But sometimes we don't even realize and we're walking on that edge every single day. We are like we are like one misstep away from falling off and ruining our lives. We are like so close to the danger zone and we don't even realize it. I wonder if you've ever said the phrase like, man, I'm just on the edge. Because some, some people are like that. You're on, you're, you're on the edge of having a panic attack because you're just full of worry. Maybe you're on the edge of lashing out because you're full of unresolved anger. Maybe you're on the edge of a, ruining a relationship because you're full of resentment. Maybe, maybe you're on the edge of lo- losing your purity because you're caught up with emotions and, and caught up with the moment. Maybe you're on the edge of losing self-control because you've been full loading up on drinks and there goes your um, rationality. Maybe you're on the edge of becoming broke because you've got 30 subscriptions and six afterpays waiting to come out of your account. And it's like, it's like sometimes we recognize this and we go, I want to stay away from the danger. And sometimes we're so close to the danger and we're so oblivious that at any moment I could fall off. At any moment I could have a panic attack today. Don't, don't you talk to me about that because I'm going to explode. And I'm sure you've all felt that way. Sometimes we understand it, sometimes we don't understand it, and then we never distance ourselves from it. And then because we don't distance ourselves from it, we fall off the cliff. It's that feeling of, at any moment, my life could fall apart. It's like that anxious state to be in where, but you know, you you don't have to live there. And I love this about God. God wants to give us more peace than that, more security than that. At any moment, this could fall apart. God wants to God wants to breathe wholeness into brokenness. And most people most people don't wake up, see something that's going to ruin their lives and run towards us. I want you to remember this. Destructive decisions often come from simply losing your balance when you're unknowingly traversing the limits of wisdom. That's when we fall off the edge. 
not because we've gone and made an intentional run into pain, but because we're simply traversing the edge of wisdom and we slip and fall off. And I think too many people are walking along that edge. They're like one slip away from falling off that cliff. So how can we create some space between us and the edge when we don't even realize it? So that's what I want to talk about. Give me space. Let's escape the danger zone. So I want to look at, I want to look at Job. And I've been journaling out of Job for feels like ages. And um, just if you don't know, Job has lost a whole lot by, by the time you get to chapter 7, which is where, 27, which is where I'm reading from. He has lost so much. He's lost his family. He's lost his livestock. He's lost his livelihood. He's lost his health. And even his friends are beginning to accuse him of doing wrong. And they're accusing him and they're saying like, all this bad stuff that's happening to you, man, this is because you have sinned. This is because you've done something wrong. So even his close friends, the last thing that he has left, they're like accusing him. And Job, he, the Bible says that he was a righteous man and, and he knows that his friends are wrong, but he is determined that he's not going to speak badly about them. 20, Job 27 verse 4 to 5 says this, My lips will not speak unjustly, nor will my tongue utter deceit. And then he says this, Far be it from me, there's that distance thing, Far be it from me that I should admit you are right in your accusations against me. Until I die, I will not remove my integrity from me. So Job is a man of a great character. And he says, far be it from me that I should accuse you. In other words, even something small like lying, which is something that is kind of like on the edge. If you lie and just continue to lie and lie and lie, it's gonna, you're creating a weak edge that you're going to fall off one day. But Job is like the option, even the option of, of telling a lie. It is so far away from him. He has distanced himself so far. He's like, far be it from me that I would lie. He has created that gap. And I'm like, how? Like, how has he done this? Like, lying is not even an option that's on the table. Job has created so much space between him and doing the wrong thing. Job's not on the edge. He can't even see the edge. He's that far away. And so looking at this, I thought that's so cool. I thought, man, that's the place that I want to live in. I don't want to be walking along every day. I could fall at any moment. I might explode. I might do this. I'm the, on the edge of this or that. And I think, again, the problem is that we don't even realize we're on the edge. And so I have just two thoughts for us tonight. And and it might not make sense straight away, but as we dig into it, it will. So my first thought tonight is, um, is, is that we just need to have a tactical retreat. Sometimes we found ourselves on the edge. And rather than continuing to walk on the edge, we need to take a step back. It's like a tactical retreat, right? And, and the problem is that we don't realize we're on the edge. So I want to help give you a filter so that you know when you're on the edge. Is that okay? So first, I want you to think about What's like the hardest decision that you have to make this week? Like something that took you a while to make a decision for. Go on and have a think about it. Maybe it was today. Maybe it was earlier in the week. Like what was just, may, maybe you can't think of the hardest decision. Think of a decision that you made this week. And if you have had a hard week, you'll probably have one come to mind straight away. And when we think about our decisions, it can kind of reveal how close we are to the edge. So, for example, if the hardest decision that I had to make today was whether I'm going to have Super Rooster or sushi for lunch, well then, like, that's good. They're both excellent options. But here's the, here's the pointer. If you're choosing between only two terrible options, then you're on the edge and you need to retreat. If you're so mad that your biggest decision is, will I punch him or will I swear at him? Man, you're on the edge. You're sitting, you're traversing the edge. If you're sitting there going, I'm pretty tipsy, should I have another drink? Should I have another shot? Man, that's, you're on the edge there. Just as a little side note, the word tipsy, I looked it up in the dictionary this week, it means slightly drunk. Some people see tipsy as the line, but come on, slightly drunk. You're already in drunk territory. You're already in territory that's like, man, you could fall off the edge at any moment. And um, it took me a while through my drinking days to sort of put that aside and get to the point where 
I, I actually had to realize, like, I'm not, I, I don't even want to be tipsy because at any moment I could fall off the edge. And so I might have a casual drink here and there, but I, I want to keep that option far away from me. So, so what are you choosing between? If your thing is like, man, I'm so jealous about this person who keeps posting about their awesome life. You know, you feel like uh, maybe I could comment about something, one of their flaws, or maybe I could point out something about them to someone else. That's like two bad options. If you're thinking, man, like I'm so worn out, should I skip life group or church today? Like, like that's probably a pretty bad option. If you're thinking to yourself, I'm so out of cash, should I try and scab money off my parents or should I make my friends feel guilty from me for me? Like that's, that's just two options that are just uncomfortable. And it's like, man, you are, you are just sitting on the edge. If, if, if a decision that you have made in the last week is, is which type of porn do I want to look at? Man, you are sitting on the edge of destruction. And so what I want you to remember today is that your considerations reveal your position. What you are considering doing, it reveals your position. So what, what have been your biggest considerations this week? Because it should point out to you whether you're sitting on the edge of destruction or whether it's like, that's a far be it from me. If it's like, man, do I want to bless this person with a gift or do I want to bless this person by going and saying not something nice to them? Like, you are far away from the edge, man. But if it's like, do I ignore them or do I tell a rumor about them or do I go and, and say something to their face? It's like, whoa, 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 you have entered the edge territory. 1 Corinthians 10 verse 13 says this, no temptation. Everyone say no temptation. None of them. regardless of its source, has overtaken or enticed you that it is not common to human experience. So please don't feel like in my examples, like I've just pointed you out of something, because it's common. It's all common experience. Nor is any temptation unusual or beyond human resistance. Boy, some of us need to hear that, that no temptation is beyond human resistance. Sometimes it feels like, man, but I just can't help it. Hey, it's not beyond human resistance. But God, He is faithful to His Word. He's compassionate and trustworthy. And He's not going to let you be tempted beyond your ability to resist. You have an ability to resist this stuff. Your life is not doomed to go over the edge. Just because you feel like, I'm, I'm on the edge of this or I'm on the edge of that, man, there is still hope for you. Just because you feel like you are doomed to every day fall off that same cliff, man, man, it is not beyond your ability. But along with the temptation, God, He has in the past is now and will always provide the way out so that you will always be able to endure it without yielding and overcome temptation with joy. So Paul says we have the ability to resist, man. He says that God provides a way out. And, it, and um, sometimes there's situations that are so hard for me to face. Other people can seem to face them, but I'm like, man, how do you face that situation and still act like a normal human being? And I know for me, okay, if God is, if they've got the strength to walk through that situation and, and not get sour about it, sure. But for me, maybe I need to take a tactical retreat. And I think some of us, maybe it's too hard. And every time we get close to the edge, we say to ourselves, now I'm not going to go off the edge this time. I promise, I promise myself that I'm not going to drink too much. Poof, off the edge. Now, like, like I, I, I've, I've consistently broken boundaries with my girlfriend or boyfriend, but we're just going to make a commitment that we're not going to do this. But then you just get so close to the edge and you just fall off again. And sometimes I think rather than hoping and trying and, and God help me on the edge, why don't you just take a bit of a tactical retreat? Get back to a place of safety. You need to walk away from the person who's making you mad. Decide what you'll do later when you're back in a safe place to make decisions. Maybe you need to sober up so that you're not one drink away from falling over. Maybe you need to log off social media so that you're not drowning in jealousy. Maybe you need to get out of your bedroom, turn your phone off so that you're not tempted to open those bad websites. Maybe you need to go on a break from spending money rather than having that credit card and just hoping that you'll have the self-control to control yourself. Maybe you need to cancel your afterpay account. Maybe you need to take a break in a relationship before you pass the point of no return. And, uh, and if you struggle, this is how I remember it. If I'm struggling to pump the brakes, I'm going to get out of the car. And, and this is how I have been able to walk through a number of situations where it's just like every time I find myself here, I just can't resist and I end up falling off. And it's like maybe I just need to take a few steps back. And, it was, and I said to myself so many times, I will not look at that website. I will not look at that website. But I just could never resist in that moment. So I took a step back and I said, I'm going to turn my phone off. 
I'm going to put it in the other room. And when, when there's no one else in the house, like, like that's taking a step back. Like, that's saying, I'm not even going to put myself in that situation. If you struggle with alcohol, then man, you need to like only bring one drink to the party. Or if, the, if they even struggle with that, you just, need to, you just need to have nothing in your closet at all. Like, why would you put yourself in a situation where you could fall over? If that's something that you really want to deal with, then, then, man, like, sometimes you need to take a step back. If you struggle with always falling into wrong relationships with, with wrong people because, you're, you know, you're finding them in a nightclub, then maybe step away from the nightclub. Like, if you can't help yourself when you're there, come on, step back. Tactical retreat. Let's analyze the decisions that we make in life. Let's look at our considerations because they reveal our position. Let's look at the areas where we're living on the edge and where we need to step away from the edge. But th- this is not just about taking a little step back. This is take- about taking a big step back. And so my second thought that I want us to remember is that we need to ground ourselves. Ground yourself. If you don't want to fall off the edge, then you need to be harnessed to something that's going to keep you at the top. It's like when you go rock climbing. Like there's a, there's a very high potential that you're going to fall. So they harness you. And it's like in life... If you, have, if you have a high risk of falling, like, you should, you should harness yourself to something. You should ground yourself to something. Because sometimes we, some of the things that we tie ourselves to in life, they're things that just jump off the edge, and then we go with them. Certain people that we hang around influence us in the wrong way. It's like, if you are hanging with that person, you, you're kind of sitting on the edge because they don't care they, if they're going to jump off at any moment, and they might very well pull you with them. I know for me, I, I made a personal decision that I, I just I didn't want to get drunk anymore, ever. But I was hanging around people who were continually getting drunk. They were continually jumping off that edge. And because I was like around them and tying myself to them, they would jump, and it's like by default, the cord would just pull me off. And it was like, like I... I did need to, I probably could have harnessed a lot more self-control, but for me, I decided I'm just going to ground myself somewhere else. And some people do it intentionally. Some people intentionally pull us away from what we want in life. Others, it's unintentional. They just have a negative influence. We need to untie ourselves from some people, but don't just stand there because someone else will come along and take you down. Go tie yourself to some quality people. Situations and places, places where you're there and you just find yourself making a bad decision, it's like you, you don't just need to walk away from that. You need to find another place that you're going to be. Attitudes and mindsets. Whenever you get onto a train of thought that never ends well, it's like, well, you can't just be like, well, I'm just going to have no thoughts and then your brain goes blank. Like you need to have something else to tie yourself to. And I love this because Job didn't walk in and he w- and just be like, Yo, guys, you're saying all that stuff. I just don't want to lie. Like, he, he, he said, I, like, I can't lie because I'm, I'm grounded in integrity. He, the, thing, the phrase he uses is, is that even until the day that I die, I will not remove integrity from me. So he's basically saying, I am so grounded in integrity. I am so tied to integrity that I couldn't fall off the edge if I tried. Job was living from a place of integrity. Integrity wasn't a choice he made. It was a base he lived from. It was a value that formed his decisions. And so when I'm talking about these tactical retreats, like we're not just simply removing things from our life. We've got to add new stuff in as well. I talked to a friend this week who um, he's like, I want, I'm I'm quitting smoking. And I'm like, that's awesome. And he's, he's gone a week without smoking. And I was like, so how is it? And he's like, it's actually really hard because I smoked so much that it would take up, like, if you added it up, it's like two or three hours of my day. And he's like, I got, I got all this time now, and I, like, I don't know what to do with it, and it's really hard. And so, like, because he replaced it with nothing, it's, a, it's really hard for him. And, you know, he might, he might be able to overcome that, and he might, um, even with nothing in its place, but he, he even said to me, like, I had to start doing weightlifting, like, just to get my mind off it. Like, he's starting to replace it with something else. It's like um, a couple who breaks their boundaries too often. It's like, well, you can't just choose to sit there and, and, and do nothing. You've got to replace it with some other sort of activities. And so it's like when you're stopping something, you, you have to, you can't just, like, stop and then just stand and look around. It's like you've got to go ground yourself in something else. If you're stopping drinking... 
you, you're not just stopping drinking, you, you, you're grounding yourself in self-control. If you're, you know, if you're trying to keep your boundaries, it's not just a simple thing of, oh yeah, I'm avoiding sexual acts in my relationship. It's no, 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 I'm, I'm replacing this and committing myself to a mindset where I'm going to honor and value my partner. And it's not just you trying to shut your mouth in the face of frustration. It's, it's you need to not just say, I'm going to shut up, but you need to make a decision that I'm going to ground myself and say, I want to be a peacemaker and allow your decisions to come out of that. It's not just saying, I'm going to stop listening to trash music. Well, then you're going to have no music to listen to and you're going to sit there and be like, I'm just tempted to turn that music on again. It's like, no, 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 I'm going to replace that by grounding myself and making a new playlist that's got wholesome and uplifting music. Like, it's not just that I'm going to stop going clubbing on a Saturday night because then you just end up doing nothing. It's like, no, you've got to find friends who add value to your life and spend time with them. So you, you, you can't just step away from the edge, but you've got to go and ground yourself and tie yourself to something. And then not just tie yourself to that, but it's like, it's like you're using that to help you to make the right decisions. It's like you're choosing to let that thing have the driver's seat. So, where can you see pain and strife in your past? Just think about that for a moment. Where have you fallen off the edge before? Where can you see regret in your past? Did you simply get pushed over the edge? And, and then the, next, the question that follows is that pain that you experience, like if it's become a pattern, then you need to start to ask, okay, where can I ground myself? And this might not be a question you can answer yourself. You might need to ask your life group leader, like, okay, if, if I want to walk away from this, like, I just seem to keep going over it. What do I need to do? Like, where do I need to go? Where do I need to ground myself? And then once you've grounded yourself, like I said, you need to put that thing in the driver's seat, like what Job did. He wasn't like, I'm going to make this decision. He was pretty much like, well, integrity wouldn't lie about you, so that's what, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to be that person. So you, it's, like, it's kind of like asking what would Jesus do, but whatever you ground yourself in. What would integrity do? You might not be an integrous person, but if you use that as a filter for your thoughts, you soon will be. You know, in those moments where you're frustrated and you're annoyed at someone, what, asking yourself, what should I do, is a bad question because your track record shows you're just going to flog him in the face. Like, or you're going to start cursing back, or you're going to go and talk about that person behind their back, or whatever. You need to ask the question, if I, okay, I want to ground myself in peace here. So, so what would a peaceful person do? Think about someone who's peaceful in your life. What would they do? Okay, they, they would do this, and I will let that form my decision. Don't ask, what should I do? Because you've clearly shown, if you keep falling off the edge, that maybe your way of thinking it needs to be replaced by a better way of thinking. It needs to be replaced by, I would dare say, God's way of thinking. And, uh, and I love that in the Bible we have such a great, vast array of different stories and different struggles that people have gone through and, and different ways that people have overcome certain situations. And, and I think it holds hope for us all that we can, we can go to God and we can be like, man, like, I don't know how to deal with this. So, God, what can I, can I ground myself in you? Can I make you home base? It's not just a decision that I'm making, but, but God is going to be the base that I live from. This is not just one situation where, where I could just fall off at any moment, but, but I'm just going to take a step back and hope that the wind doesn't blow me over. But like, I'm going to, I'm going to far be it from me, man. Like get that thing far away from me. And some of us, we can do okay in life. Like flip, Damo Wooldridge is like my hero because one day he was just like, you know what? I'm unhappy with my physical form. And, uh, you know, just a bit of extra fast food. And he was just like, yeah, I'm unhappy with that. And he was able to just walk away. And I was like, man, like, how do you do that? Like, you just decide that you're going to do that? And you're like, what? Like, how? And, and it took me ages to be like, you know, I really want to get alcohol out of my life. But one day, Damo was just like, I don't want to get drunk every weekend. And he just stopped. And I was like, what? <laughs> like, like, ups to you, Damo. Anyway, the point is, if you can walk away from that, then great. But if you struggle to fall over every time, maybe you need to do a full 180, like Pastor Chris says, repent, turn the other way, and run towards something that I can harness myself to. Like, I'm going to harness myself to this thing 
So that no matter how hard the wind blows, no matter how many people tell me I should be doing this, like I am holding on to this for dear life. I'm going to ground myself there. After 27 chapters of Job, we see an exchange where his friends accuse him again and again and again and again and again. And chapter 27, this is getting close to the end of the exchange. And he's still like, far be it from me, because I will not remove integrity from my life till the day I die. So what do you need to put into your heart? What do you need to put into your life? Where are you struggling? Where are you finding yourself falling off over the edge again and again and again? And it's not, it might be hard to be like, okay, if, I, if I'm not going to do that, what is my option? Please talk to someone. Please, like, look it up in the Bible. Ask a leader. Ask someone who can help you and someone who values you. And it's going to be like, you know what? I think you should ground yourself to this, to the truth to integrity, to having self-control, to valuing your partner, to valuing your own health, to doing this, to doing this, whatever it is. Because you can't just make the decision to stop eating donuts. You've got to say to yourself, I want to be healthy, you know? It's like, let's ground ourselves. So if you're living on the edge, let's step back. Let's ground ourselves. And uh, so many of us, we look back and we regret the things that we've done in the past, but you have the power to stop that from becoming a pattern. If you, if you switch on your brain and just think, am, where am I right now? Look at the considerations that you're making in life. Look at the decisions that you're making. It'll show you if you're close to the edge. And don't just let things happen. Take control of your actions. Ask yourself, what can I do in this situation? And you're going to find yourself making quality decisions. You're going to find yourself doing so, so, so well in life. And... Um, and like I said at the beginning of this message, like, like I'm just a guy here trying to share my best advice. I'm far from perfect, and I've stuffed it up so many times, and I've fallen off the edge again and again and again, and I've got so many scars. And, um, but, but I just know that the more parts of my life that I've grounded to God, the more I, I have just found my life not falling off the edge, the more I found myself in a safe place, realizing that, you know, these things that some people go, like, wow, why would, you, why would you put that on your life? Why would you choose to not have sex before marriage? Because it's so fun and like everyone's doing it. And it's just like, man, like because I made that decision because I'm grounding myself in God. Like I just have had a way better experience than some of the people I know who haven't. And like every time, every time that I look back on my life and I see pain and strife, it's because I'm like, wow, I just, I really was making my own decisions there. And I was making those decisions based off me and who I was and, and what, what I wanted to do. And just making so many mistakes, just sitting all the time, thinking the wrong things, doing the wrong things. But every time that I grounded myself in God, I found that my life actually worked a whole lot better. And, and you know, this is actually because God, when, when He created us, it was in His image, like, and, and sure, humanity is broken and humanity is fractured and we all make mistakes and we keep falling off the edge, but God is always there. And God wanted us to do life with Him. He wants to help us. He wants to help you to do life well. We've just got to choose to ground ourselves in Him. And the best thing, like the thing, we got Easter coming up. The thing that I love about Easter is what Jesus did for us. He, he went and he, and he paid a price for all the stuff that we did he died on a cross so that we would be free from the power of sin pulling us over the edge each and every time. Like we are now free from that power and penalty of sin. And we, we have the power to walk away and ground ourselves in God. All that you got to do is actually look at the, what, the way that the decisions that you make and then look at God and be like, you know what, God, I'm going to trust that this is the best way to go. I'm going to trust that your version of living, your way of living is better than any sort of version that I could create myself. Walking, walking back, looking at God and going, you know what, I might not be able to see the future, but I'm going to have faith because faith just means that you have trust in what's unseen. And, and just being like, you know what, I've, I just want to put my faith in God. And I think at each and every moment of the day, we all have the opportunity to walk away from the edge and to connect ourselves in with God again. And, um, and I might not be there this week when you fall off the edge to encourage you to pick you up or anything like that. But you can run to God at any moment. And, um, and I think it's just such a powerful thing to do is to run and to ground ourselves into God. And, and so actually, I want to I wanna stop right now and I want us to think about maybe if we need to do that in any area of our life. So just to help you free distraction and, and think about that yourself, could you just close your eyes for a moment? This is for you. This is your moment. The best messages and sermons 
shouldn't be something where I come and talk and you agree, but it should be something that you take and you wrestle with and you think about and you ask questions of yourself. And so I want you to do that right now. Of all that I've spoken about, where, where have you seen that pain and regret in your life? Where have, where have you seen that trouble and that strife where you're just sitting on the edge of a, of a cliff that's just crumbling away and you're about to fall off? Where do you need to run back to God in? Where do you need to do that 180 where you stop facing over the cliff like you could fall at any moment, but you turn and you start going in the opposite direction towards God? God, I pray as we bring these situations to our brain right now that we would just be able to trust you with them that we would be able to see where you want to hold us and be able to walk to that place, to be able to see those values that we need to um, tie ourselves to, Lord. All of those situations and places, those people, those mindsets that maybe we need to take a tactical retreat from. I pray that you'd help us to identify those and help us to work through those this week. In Jesus' name, amen. And um. Can you actually just keep your eyes closed just for another moment? And, um, and, and I want to pray again. But this time, I want to pray for anyone who just wants to put God right back at the center of their life. I just want to pray for those people. So if that's you and you're just sitting there thinking, man, I, just, I don't need to run back in just one area. I need to run and I need to make God the center of my whole life. And if that's you, man, I want to pray for you. So whether you've made that decision for the first time or maybe tonight you want to make that decision for the first time, sorry, or maybe you've chosen that before and you've just found yourself on the edge again and you want to be back where God is, back tied to that harness where it's like, man, God is the center of my decisions. Can you just pop your hand up right now and I'm going to pray with you, if that's you anywhere. One, two, three, four, awesome, awesome. Five, great, thank you. Six, great, thank you. Seven, Anyone else? Yep, thank you. Once you put your hand up, you can put it down. Like I said, man, whenever I started to base myself in God, that's when I noticed my life started to really get back on the increase. Anyone else here before I pray? Great. Well, God, I just pray for all these people. I pray that uh, who have just made that decision. And I pray that this week, that as they choose to make you home base, not just an option to choose, but a base to live from. I pray that you would be with them. I pray that as they ask you for help, that you'd be there making yourself real to them. I pray that you help them to see you in every decision that they could be making, every, every value that they could be choosing, God. And I pray that you would become alive to them this week. Help them to see you. Help them to experience you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Can we just give a round of applause for those people? And uh, that's... Like I said, man, just whenever people make that decision, that there, there's just there's good times ahead. Hey, God has got good stuff for our life. We're gonna pray this prayer, and uh, this is this is just to help you solidify that decision that you've just made in your heart. So let's all pray this together. We're gonna pray it out loud. Dear Jesus, I believe in you. Thank you for forgiving me. Come into my life, and I will follow you. Amen. Cool. Well, let's go have a great week this week making wise choices. And, um, and if anything, let's just identify where we're just cruising along the edge a bit too close and determine that, man, we're going to chase after God in those situations. Cool? Great. Thank you, guys. I'm heading over to Amy.